Oh, okay. Renee's like, yeah, about time. All right. So no, I just starting. That's all. <laughs> we're going to uh, do the 22nd, 23rd tonight. Uh, go, we'll go through them pretty quick. I kind of like this new style where we're not talking so much about case law and all the stuff that muddies the waters. Um, I kind of like being able to, I wish we would have done this from the start, really just hit it real generally like this. And we still have good discussions, but we're not having to waste our time with a bunch of stuff that nobody's ever going to remember. Um, so we'll get into the 22nd, we'll get into the 23rd. I know 22nd is going to get off the rails a little bit talking about term limits and that's okay. Uh, because it is all constitutional issues. Um, anybody have anything before I start? Uh, for those of you that are here, uh, I don't know if you saw, uh, Chris put up a, the bill um, for the port john for the uh, get together we have. Um, he's, if you have a couple bucks to throw his way just to offset that cost, that would be great. If you could take a look at that, um, all the information's on there about how to uh, get him the money. So, all right, moving on, unless anybody has anything. Nope. All right. So let's talk about the 22nd Amendment. 22nd Amendment. Two sections. First section says no person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice and no person who has held the office of president or acted as president for more than two years of a term to which some other person was elected president shall be elected to the office of the president more than once. But this article shall not apply to any person holding the office of president when this article was proposed by Congress and shall not prevent any person who may be holding the office of president or acting as president during the term within which this article becomes operative from holding the office of president or acting as president during the remainder of such term. Section two is this article shall be inoperative unless it shall have been ratified as an amendment to the constitution by the legislatures of three fourths of the several states within seven years from the date of its submissions to the states by the Congress. All right, so um, basically in a nutshell, what this thing does is just sets, sets term limits, right? When we went back, if you go back in history here, uh, if you remember article two, section one, the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. He shall hold this office during the term of four years and together with the vice president chosen for the same term be as elected as follows. And then it goes on to how we elect the president. So in the original 1787 constitution, it did set the term at four years, but it didn't, it didn't set a limit on those terms. So if somebody were to get in at 35, he could be president of the United States for 60 years, as long as people want to keep electing him. Um, George Washington set the unwritten rule for two terms until FDR came along. This actually, this amendment came along because of FDR. Um, FDR was elected to four terms. So he could have done a full 16 years. Died, uh, I think in the first year of his fourth term, um, at which point Harry Truman, who was his vice president, became president. Um, now, George Washington went out after two terms and he went out saying that he doesn't believe any man should be president longer than more than two terms. Um, and that kind of stood as an unwritten rule, like I said, until FDR came along. Now, a little fun fact, though, is that George Washington was not necessarily um, opposed uh, or he was opposed to setting term limits. Uh, he didn't feel that term limits needed to be in place. Um, I believe his quote was that um, uh, such restrictions were fairly discussed at the convention. So he felt that had they wanted terms in the constitution, they would have put terms in there. It was discussed. And while he thought personally um, that two terms was enough, he was not one uh, who thought that it should have been in the constitution. Everything went along swimmingly until um, FDR got in and then he decided to run for four. And that's where this came from. So it was passed by Congress 47, ratified by the states in 51. Discussion on this? Because I got a little something to say. Just that I think FDR, the way he got away with four terms is because he was presenting it like he said that during war, it would convolute things to have to switch presidents. And so that's why people were like, oh yeah, that's a good point. And I think that's how he got away with it. And then- well, remember too, well he did just pull them. He came through the, uh, the Great Depression. Um, he was the president that pulled us out, I guess, 
to say of the Great Depression. So yeah, he did. He he said that about the war, but he also had coming off of the Great Depression, bringing us back uh, from that. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Did I cut you off? Did I cut you off, Daniel? Sorry, I was muted. Nope, you're good. No. I actually, I, I kind of find myself going back and forth on that because you, you think of like a president like Ronald Reagan, who barely won his first term, but in his second term, I think he won 49 out of 50 states. And then that was it. And you had somebody that the entire country was kind of rallied behind. Um, obviously, he, he was getting a little older. I think he was getting hit with dementia pretty much, uh, second term. But, you know, say that was a, a healthy young man. Like, I would I'd love to have had 12 or 16 years of Ronald Reagan because he was doing the right things. Yeah, but the and problem is, it. obviously, the problem is if you do that and you've got 12 years of Ronald Reagan, then you end up with 12 years of Jimmy Carter also. Or well, could, no, could, could, but th that's the, that's my point is Jimmy Carter had four years because he sucked. He did suck. <laughs> and okay. yeah, you know, I would rather be in my, I'd rather be going into my 13th year with Barack Obama than my first year of Joe Biden. Personally. Sorry, I'm just looking around for support of that statement. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I find interesting here is if you read this, that it, no person shall be elected to the office of president more than twice. So it doesn't matter if it's consecutive or not. Right. So Donald Trump runs again. He can only run for four more years. Um, or obviously it sets um, the vice president being able to run for or be president for a, a max of 10 years. But nowhere in here and nowhere in the Constitution does it limit vice presidents. Now, we've never run into that before, but tell me you couldn't, you could not envision a scenario where Donald Trump runs for four more years, he gets it, then runs as a vice president, and whoever is president steps down, and now he is appointed for another four more years, which could happen. And that's one of the debates about this is it, it says elected. It doesn't say anything about being appointed. If you if you are put in there by any other means other than being elected, it's not covered under the Constitution. But you're so elected as vi you're elected as vice president. I don't think you can be on the ticket if you've been the president for eight years at all. You can. You absolutely can. There is no stipulation to how long or how, how there's no term limit at all to being a vice president. You'd have to show me where it is because I've been looking and it's not, looking. it's not in there. Well, in the one article, it says that you uh, you have to be able to be elected president to be vice president. And if you've already done two terms as president, is that going to, do you think elected. that's going to? You couldn't be elected. You would, as you would term limit out, but do you meet the qualifications of being president? I don't know. I don't think so because you, you would no longer qualify to be president because you've already served two terms. And I could be totally wrong, but as I read it, that's the one thing that, that stood out to me. So I started looking up, is there, you know, where are we with vice presidential term limits? And there is no such thing. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I don't believe there's a vice presidential yeah, term limit. I think if you're the vice president for eight years under one president, and then a new president comes in, you could be their vice president for eight more years. And then a new president comes in. You could be very, very, you could be their vice president for eight more years. There's no term limits in that regard. But once they serve agree. as the president for eight years, they're no longer eligible to be VP. I agree. Okay, you might be right. You might be right. I wasn't, and I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't thinking about that one. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that one uh, condition. There. Yep. That might be what saves us. From what, 12 years of Kamala? Dude. Actually, breaking news tonight, there's talk on Capitol Hill that there's going to be an appointment made 
in the house. And typically the only thing the house would, would appoint is a vice president. What? Yeah, that, that was breaking news tonight, right before we came on. Um, so it, apparently people are talking like maybe Kamala Harris is going to be out. What? Uh, Where did you yeah, see? Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, right I, before we like came on. Dana Perino, Dana Perino talked about it on The Five. And then... It was on Brett Bear's podcast I'm that dead. somebody that... that uh, um, Covers the Hill was saying that they're talking about appointing the vice president. Either she goes out or January 21st, 2023, um, Biden steps down and they appoint a new vice president when she becomes president because they, they want to keep him in office for at least two years so she could still run, in essence, for two more to two election cycles for president and have a total Seems like it would be pretty early for them to do that now though to, to make that announcement with a whole nother year left to go they didn't make the announcement it's just that's what's talked on a hill and reporter a reporter figured like got the scoop on it well no that's what i'm saying though i know they haven't made the announcement i'm saying it seems like it would be early to me for them if they had a year to go to make that announcement now well i mean they just they're just i haven't seen any, and, I, I haven't seen this anywhere no, it's, I mean, it just came out tonight. Chad Program, you know, the guy on Fox that works on Capitol Hill, that knows the procedural aspect of what goes on in the House and the Senate. He said he got word from an, somebody very high up that knows what's going on, that there's talk about the House getting, being prepared to appoint somebody. And that would be the vice president. Yeah, because they they are talking a lot about um, Kamala's approval rating and the fact that it's so low. Like if if there, it wouldn't totally shock me if she resigned or Joe Biden asked for her resignation so that they could appoint somebody that has the chance right. of being a, a decent successor to well, him. Wait next a minute, year. though. Congress doesn't hold on. If, yeah. If, if, if it's Harris, vice president, if Harris vice were president. to ascend into the presidency, she gets to pick her vice president. She's right, not but ascending. She but if she resigns now, I'm saying. Well, she that's what I'm saying. That's why. That's Biden. what I'm saying, though, is that it, it it would not be a case of we're getting ready for Joe to resign, and we're going to appoint a vice president because that's not how it works. Right. The only the it's only right. plausible stipulation, the only plausible scenario here would be her resigning. Mm -hmm. Right. But then doesn't, would Joe get to pick his next president or he, vice president? He would have to um, make a recommendation to the Congress and they have to approve it because they're on the presidential ticket. So the people haven't voted. So the House are the people's yeah. representative. So yeah, they would then make that vote. What the hell? And they would, have that be one, would that be one vote per state? I, I don't know exactly the process of that, but I do know we'd have to look at um, probably Gerald Ford and uh, Rockefeller was the last time that happened. I just can't remember. The, I, I don't know the whole process, but. Yeah. Well, Agnew, Agnew resigned. And then Spiro, they. Spiro Agnew resigned under Nixon. Mm -hmm. Then Ford, that's Ford would be the one. So it happened twice. So Ford as the VP, that would be the one because Ford was the guy that they appointed in the VP role. And then when Nixon resigned, right. Ford went up to president and then they had Man. a vacancy VP you know, again. Shoo, I'm going to have to look into all this. We might have to have another meeting. <laughs> For real. I got to look into all this. This is craziness. All right. All right. All right. Well, yeah, let's under the, uh, the 25th amendment. What's that? Wouldn't that be under the 25th amendment? If if they're removing oh. Joe, but no, but even so, though, under the 25th, the vice president is still the vice president. She would just assume the president's duties. The 25th doesn't uh, remove the president. Uh, I'm looking here. It says uh, How crumbling Biden Harris detent could signal search for new VP. 
The panel on the five on Tuesday discussed the possibility that the relationship between Joe Biden and Kamala Harris could get to the point that the vice president could be replaced either in the middle of the president's term or on his presumptive election reelection ticket in 2024. Dana, wow. Dana Perino noted there is indeed a process for confirming a new vice president in the middle of a term, and it is not necessarily unprecedented, though highly unusual and rare. Nearly a dozen presidents have gone all or some of their tenure without a vice president or have gotten a new vice president midterm. Yeah, I think it's nine. Before Congress completed a confirmation process for former New York Republican Governor Nelson Rockefeller to be President General Gerald Ford's deputy following his ascension to the pre presidency amid Richard Nixon's resignation. Another example, President William Harry, Henry Harrison died only weeks into his 19, or 1841 term after battling pneumonia. Some believed he contracted at his um, inauguration. Vice President John Tyler assumed the presidency and completed his term without a formal vice president. I'll, I'll put this link in the... Wasn't there something um, back when the last year of Trump where Nancy Pelosi was trying to do something with the 25th Amendment. One of this has, if this is tied to this at all. Yeah, but the 25th, it, the 25th is only going to deal with getting Joe, taking Joe's powers away from him temporarily. It what, doesn't is, remove what, is, what is what is what is this yeah. section two then, where it says in the 25th right. Amendment, whenever there's a vacancy in the office of the vice president, the president shall nominate a vice president who shall take office upon confirmation. That majority vote of right, but you're talking that's you're talking about su succession there. So whenever there's a vacancy, geez, man, we're getting off here. Whenever there is a vacancy in the <laughs> office of the vice president, the president shall nominate a vice president who shall um, now. But section but one is say section section one is in case of the removal of the president from office or his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. Section two is whenever there is a vacancy in the office of vice president. So that you're talking about removing the president um upon his death or resignation um no that's yeah. not what i mean no, presidential not... succession section one in case of the removal of the president from the office or of his death or resignation the vice president shall become president correct right? section two whenever there is a vacancy in the office but we're not talking about removing joe biden here but it's five noted that, that the presidential line of succession due to the ascension to the presidency. It doesn't address why there's a vacancy. You, it can be vacant because the person died. I mean, you're tying the two together, and that I don't read it that way. I don't read it that that. No, I guess. I guess you're. Yeah, on. I guess that would be right. I mean, the twenty fifth is. Whenever anybody talks about the twenty fifth, we're talking about like Joe being joe and they remove him remove his powers mm -hmm. but right. you're right i mean that is succession DJ, but this, this is, is not out books but this is not related <laughs> this article says i mean they they're indicating that it this has nothing to do the succession rule does not apply right well, yeah I, not automatically become vice president nor would Leahy who has announced his retirement in 2022. The speaker and pro tem only ascend to the presidency upon simultaneous incapacitation of an incumbent president and vice president. Well, you know what? That's gonna work out That's gonna work out good because next week's gonna be 24, 25. So buckle up. I guess mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna have to do some research here on this. Jim, we already did the 25th. Uh, oh, we did, didn't we? When we were talking oh, yeah. about, yeah, well, we're going to have to revisit it. If this is true, if this is really what's being talked about, I think we revisit it. I think we have to. I think I'd be doing a disservice if we don't revisit the 25th at least. Huh. On the podcast, Kergram said he received an email from a source who wrote that the reporter should start to familiarize yourself with the confirmation process, not just in the Senate, but in the House for a vice president. I was very surprised to get that very cryptic email just a few weeks ago. So. Wow. Crazy mm -hmm. times, man. All Does right. that have something to do with them keeping her intentionally on vacation? Well, you know, and I, we mm -hmm. talked about this before. I, I always thought that I always thought they were keeping her out because they were looking at making her the next nominee. They wanted her so far away from this train wreck of, of an administration that 
they thought they were doing something right. And if, if that's the case, this has backfired on them gloriously, right? Because she's at 28% approval. There's no coming back from that. Well, I, mean, I was I was reading something that they were keeping her off of the records and everything because they are trying to remove her completely from everything. See, uh, you got to be careful the way you're talking there. And I mean, and not what you're saying, but I mean, that thought, because if they're trying to remove a duly elected vice president just because they don't like the way she's doing things or... Uh, that, I mean, she, look, you know, look, look, she's look not doing her job Trump. at the border. Well, here's well, she, here's the thing. I'm wondering if they are going to make her a scapegoat for something. Well, she, they may, but the fact is, I mean, she's duly elected. The people elect. Well, I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, she's not. How many times has she visited the border? Well, yeah, but that doesn't matter. She's still elected. Well, but that's but, her job. there's but, no recall. But. The president can can request her resignation. Yes, and sure, she can. She'll tender it. Mm -hmm. Kelly doesn't even know how to spell resignation. Man, these are some scary times. I know. Have you ever seen House of Cards? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all dirty. All right, so we got way off here. Who who brought right. that up? Kathy, did you bring Kathy. this up? Kathy. <laughs> All right, so Kathy is going All to be right. banned. Kathy's banned for the next four meetings. We're going to take away her speaking <laughs> privileges. Sorry. Oh, God. They, I'm going to have to look into this. this no, is, that, yeah. it's, it, it actually is a good time to bring it up because there is no, there is nothing that's really written here about how to get rid of a, a vice president. You know? Yeah, Harris is going to get Clinton. Man, we're talking, we're talking about term limits and now there's no term limits for vice president. I didn't think they would last for less than a year. It's like the, uh, the anti-term limit. Mm -hmm. not, only, not only are there not term limits, but you're not even going to make your term. God, this is craziness. All right. I got to load up my mags and put sandbags on my windows. This is not going to go well. <laughs> If anybody has any sandbags they want to donate to me. I what mags? What, what, mag, what, what are these mags you speak of? <laughs> magazines? All my political magazines? Oh, yeah. There you go. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're going to cover us windows so All that right. people can't so, see them. So we talked about the 22nd for a split second, and then we talked about the 26th. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I don't know what's happening right now. The rails have fallen <laughs> off the rails here. Squirrel. Squirrel. All right. Uh, moving on. Oh, we're going to get back to this, though. This is exciting to me. All right. So 23rd Amendment, 23rd Amendment, Section 1, the district con constituting the seat of government of the United States shall appoint in such manner as the Congress may direct the number of electors of president and vice president equal to the whole number of senators and representatives in Congress to which the district would be entitled if it were a state, but in no event more than the least populous state. They shall be in addition to those appointed by the states, but they shall be considered for the purposes of the election of president and vice president to be electors appointed by a state. And they shall meet in the district and perform such duties as provided by the 12th article of amendment. Section two is the Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. So 23rd amendment, what it does. It basically gives the citizens of Washington, D.C. the right to have their votes counted in presidential elections by, oh, misspell, by giving them representation in the Electoral College, but no more than the least populous state, which means that they will never have more than three electors. Um, that's it. That's all this amendment does. Um, gives them the right to um, elect electors so that they have a voice in the federal uh, elections in the presidential elections. What it does not do, it does not give the district representation in Congress at all. It does not grant the district statehood. It does not change the way the district is governed. If you remember that Congress has the sole authority in governing the District of Columbia, however, they have remained pretty hands off ever since this thing started. They've allowed them to have a mayor council but Congress ultimately has uh, rights over governing the district. 
1978, Congress adopted the D.C. Voting Rights Amendment. This was the last time that it was try actually pushed through, uh, but only 16 states ratified it before its expiration. It was one of those where they had seven years to get it done, and it was inoperative if it was not done within those seven years. They only had 16 states that said, yeah, we want D.C. to have full representation um, as basically as a state, um, but went nowhere. So that's the 23rd. 23rd grants DC uh, the right to have electors, but that's it. Now they do have a, if you remember, they have a non-voting member in the House of Representatives, but they do not have, now what they, when they are considered a state by the federal government is when they have to pay their taxes, when they have to pay their federal income tax. Um, Anything that benefits the government, they are considered a state. Anything that would benefit them, they are not considered a state. So what do we think? I think this is one where case law is important to bring up because Brown versus the Board of Education was what influenced this in the 60s in the sense that like once that integration in schools came, the civil rights movement was brewing that ended up influencing them wanting to get the DC vote because at the time DC was prominently black and they thought that doing this would um, push more civil rights topics to the forefront. So that's what I recall about this one is that it was influenced by case law. Is that right? Well, okay, then go with it. Because do you know more? Because you're, you're I did not look into all the case law on this one. Or is that all you got? That's all I got. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's see. Well, who else? Anybody else? Brad? Where's David Davis when you need him? Brad, nothing? No, that was good information. I, I, just pulled up Wikipedia, which is, you know, a trusted source. It is. And, uh, Daniela was right. There's, I, I'd never heard anything about uh, Brown versus Board inner, like, not Brown versus Board, but DC statehood even being considered about anything with race relations, but that's part of it. So, good fact. Well, they're, uh, they're, I mean, we just went through this before where they wanted DC to be a statehood, and, you know, if DC becomes a statehood, they are, it doesn't get any more blue than uh, DC. Um, and they would get then their, their full representation. There's 700, what's their population there now? Almost a million, I think, in the district. So I think that's probably more populous than 10. I don't know how many states actually. Um, more than Wyoming. That's oh, it's sure. going to be more populous. I want to say it's going to be it's got to be more than like 10 states, right? Um, but yeah, then they would jump up from their three electors to it being uh, to it being based on their population. They would have representation. They would have both uh, representation in the House. And then um, well, obviously two, two Democratic senators. senators. Yep. They would have their two senators. But then I guess they would have to change that, right? With I mean, there's a lot to it because then they would have to change the cap on the representatives. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever happen in our time. They push for it. They push for it all the time. I don't, I don't know if it's ever not being pushed for for DC statehood. And I get their point. I get it. I mean, I, they're paying taxes just like everybody else is, but they don't have have the representation. Um, I'll have to look into Brown uh, the Board of Education. No, I I haven't even looked into that. Yeah. Like so D in. yeah, if DC would be the third high or third lowest populated state. It'd be more third populous. Lowest, really? It, it yeah, it has more than Wyoming and Vermont. Getting close to a lot. It might pass Alaska soon, but not yet. What about North Dakota? God, I would North think Dakota, it's uh, Wyoming, Vermont, GC, Alaska, North Dakota, South Dakota, Delaware. Top That's seven. Surprising. I would have thought that that they would have been above all that. Yeah. Huh. All right. So, I mean, that's it. Uh, that's all I got. We've read it. 
unless you guys have, I'm trying to read up on this real quick. I probably should have done this before. Um, unless you guys got something on this, I'm so excited right now. I can't wait to go and look up this thing about what's going on. The vice president. I can't believe it's not, I mean, I'm not seeing it on Twitter. I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'll, I'll look it up when we're done. Everybody fact check that. Facebook fact check that? What's that? Any of that about the VP stuff. I don't, I have not seen one story. I've gone through my feed since we've been talking about this. I don't see one story on this. You would think I, don't, I don't either, other than Fox yeah. News, the, the article that Renee I was just reading. Posted. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I've seen either. Like, I, I've tried to find it and found it on Fox News right before Renee started reading it, and that's all I've seen. Well, do you think you're going to see it on on the the other media? Well, yeah, I can't. I mean, I, how watch, I, I honestly, I'm surprised Fox would break it. Like, if no, I don't think you're the... going to see it. Well, I don't think you're I... going to see it reported until it's almost a done deal. Yeah, but I, when it is reported, I, I expect CNN or MSNBC to break it because they're the Democratic, right? What you know, that's their lane. So the fact that Fox News is talking about it first is kind of baffling to me. You know. Hold on, I'm going back to the 23rd here real quick. But at the same time, if everybody's getting the same scoops, Fox might want to be the one to break it, and the other ones are holding back, so I don't know. I just don't trust the, the media at all. <laughs> so, Ding, ding, ding. So on the 23rd, if we did give D.C. statehood, right, and this is that deal where they're talking about making just like the White House and the Capitol the district, where everything else would then be whatever they call the state. So there would still be the, the, the district of Columbia, the, the federal seat. But we would have to, at that point, repeal the 23rd, right? Because some of the stuff I'm reading here says that some, some say that it would just become a dead letter. I mean, it would be, you know, when, when you get rid of the district, then this doesn't matter. But are you really getting rid of the district? All you're doing is shrinking it. So by the Constitution, the White House and the Capitol would have three electors in the Electoral College if you don't repeal the 23rd, right? Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And if, if, if they're going to shrink the seat, what would make sense is just to have Virginia and Maryland consume that 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 area there's no reason virginia and another state right i mean and that was all land that was given uh, by those states so just give it back to them but but they're not going to do that that's not what they want they're not after that they're not after right they're not after they're they're after after, they're after another state they're after another blue state they're not after after the people after two senators that's what they're after right they're after after two senators yep they're after two senators and they're after however many more representatives they get which is i don't think they care about the representatives they want the senators well they they would they would absolutely look at how close close the house is right now you add all those representatives in there and they keep the house so i think they probably care about both i agree they want the senators but I mean, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I don't know how many reps they would have, but they're going to, they would, uh, they need all the reps they can get right now. Wait, you said then they would have three electors, but don't they already have three electors now? Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if they made DC a state and they shrunk it down to just the White House and the Capitol, basically the White House and the Capitol would have three electors at the Electoral College to vote for President of the United States according to the 23rd that would essentially turn into six electors because that new state would have two senators and an elector in the house and then dc would still like the white house and would still have their two or their three elector electors right right yeah and i would guess that if they ever went state i would like to think that that would be part of it is that it has there has to be a repeal in there for the 23rd but if they didn't I don't know. It's just interesting. I don't well, know. 
constitutional to establish DC, this like, you know, neutral territory? What was that? That was part of some something. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. It was the, um, um, what was the, uh, the clause? Uh, I had it there. I had it pulled up. No, it is. It's established in the Constitution where uh, the federal seat is established and Congress has sole authority over, uh, over it, but that they, they give up they are not give up, but they, they're hands off. You know, they let them have a mayor, they let them have a council, but there's nothing in there that says they have to. Congress can run the whole show if they want. Um, you know, I don't have it up here. It's going to take Article a one, section eight, clause 17. There you go. Article one, section eight, clause 17. It's what the Google says. <laughs> oh, God. Remember Article 1, Section 8, how long it took us to get through that? That was, that was back before I had Prezi. All my stuff's all highlighted here. And it's still relevant today. So you can't let the Constitution go. Uh, that's not right. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. That's military installations. Well, Google's wrong again. Yeah, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. That's going to be uh, military installations. Clause, organizing the militia. Militia clause. Daniela, come on, you're killing me here. I wasn't ready for this question. Oh, mark and reprisal. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. That is definitely not Article 1, Section 8. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But I'll get back to you on that. So what's the question? Is where in the Constitution does it set up uh, the district, right? I just know it's in there somewhere. I know. Okay. You're right. It is. I remember talking about it. Yeah. It might, I mean, it might be pertinent to read it again now, but you don't have to waste your time looking for it. It's there. We know it's there. Mm. All right. How about who's going to be the first one to find it? Is anybody else <laughs> looking or just me? No, I'm looking. I do a still. So I think that's right. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of legislative state, which shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals. So it's basically saying that that area is DC and that area is in charge of forts, magazines, arsenals. So that's what I'm getting there. Section eight, clause 17, right. Yeah, that's, that, that's DC, not mm -hmm. just 10 square miles. The district spoken of in the first part of this okay. clause is the District of Columbia. And this district is the city of Washington headquarters of the national government. Okay. All right. I, yeah. Right. You know what? I just read the title of it when I was going through them all. And I, it's the military uh, installation clause or military. What, what was it? Section 10, Article 1. All right. Oh, no. I mean, you guys are probably right. I probably should have read it. I was looking, you know what? What I was looking for, because it's also called the seat of government clause. And that's what I was looking for, was where it said seat of government. Article one, section we'll go into one. Rugged Constitution nailed it. Yeah, buddy. What's that? Oh, rugged Constitution. Rugged Constitution. Yep. Yeah, I. Uh, where does the? I think the. Where's the rugged Constitution in? What's the last uh, amendment in there? Twenty sixth. 
Hang on, I'll tell you. We all got the updated version, not the one from the 60s like you found. Right. Mine stops at the 26th. Oh, you know what? You know what? Here was my problem. You guys are right. So there's uh, clause 17 is there's two parts to it. Yep. There's the enclave clause, which is what we're talking about here. And then there is also uh, military installations. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't uh, I just didn't look back far enough. Yeah, that's going to be it. Congress shall have the power to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by cessation of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States. Yep, and then Federalist number 43 we'd wanna go back to, which is where James Madison explained the needed for a federal district if you remember, so that we didn't want to give one state, uh, any one state too much power by allowing them to control the federal government, right. which is why the district was made in the first place. So yeah, so we would have to go back to uh, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, and then also back to Federalist 43 and read those. And I think that would answer all of Daniela's questions. Hey, mine ends on 22nd, my rugged constitution. Yeah, I don't think, because I know the 25th isn't in mine. Let me yeah. see, I got it here. This is yeah. a 1959. Yep, mine's the 22nd too. We have Gee, my, little, my little pocket Cato Institute constitution ends at 27. No, 27 is the last one. The yeah. rugged constitution was made in 59. So there was there were a few amendments that came on after the rugged constitution that aren't right. in there. This looks like um, this was most recently updated 1980. Yours? Yeah. Wow. Mine. Nice. I should have got the updated one. Except my kids bought me mine. So it means a little something to me. Right. So what do I have here? It's been a long time since we're back in Article 1, Section 8. Right. Uh, Pretty much a year. Yeah. Yeah. Motion detected at the front door. Yeah, all the stuff I have. I mean, all the uh -oh. stuff I have uh, highlighted in this is, is stuff we've already talked about. Just the fact it would require a constitutional amendment um, in order to make... DC estate. I just wonder, like I said, I just wonder on the on the repeal of 23, like where that fall falls in. Because I see a lot in here where people say it would just become a dead letter, you know, that it wouldn't matter anymore. But I don't think that's true. I think it would matter. I think that the Constitution says that the district gets three, the 23rd says the district gets three electors. So if they make the district down to a quarter square mile, and just the White House and the Capitol, they're going to get three electors out of that if we don't repeal this. And I like to think there's smarter people than us that probably see this and aren't going to let this go through. Of, don't you actually have to live there? Uh, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah, to vote from there, yeah. To vote from there, to have an elector from there, you'd have to live there. So they'd all come out of the White House, right? You're right. Yeah, I mean, Joe the Biden. only ones that are going to live there, I guess, would be... Joe well, Biden it depends. I mean, the vice himself. president... I guess it depends where they actually make the district too, right? I mean, that's, we're saying just the White House and the Capitol, but uh, where's the vice president live? Uh, Naval Observatory, I think. Yeah, like across the street. No, I think, I think the vice president has a residence at the Naval Observatory. Oh, is that right? Yep. Okay. I believe that is true. But yeah, I mean, depending, depending on how small they make it or how big they make it, they would still get their three electors. Yeah. I don't well, and, and is there anything to say that it has to be in that particular area? Could they do one square mile there in what's currently DC and then one square mile in Nebraska and put the Department of Agriculture there, you know, and kind of mix and match and have, you know, one square mile in 10 different states and that's the district. 
you know, but it's just spread out throughout the, the nation. <clears throat> well, you way. would have to get, because remember, uh, in that clause, it says by cessation of particular states. So you would have to get those states willing okay. to give up their land. And I bet that's not going to happen. And the okay. acceptance of Congress. Well, so, the federal government already owns more land than anyone else. So how they could just give up their own damn land. You know what I mean? They already own it. Yeah, but I think if it's going to be, no, see, that's not the way I read it. I think that if, if you're going to make a district within a state, the state has to secede that land for the district. But you know what? I don't. Yeah, think, I, 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 you could probably make an argument either way, and that would probably have to be ironed out by some constitutional lawyers. But it's, you know, it's one of the things the federal government already owns the land. Why couldn't they just, this is mine now. Because I don't, I don't know, man. I God, I have to go back and read it all. I remember we talked about this, and I don't think that's the way it works. It might not be. If I, fuck if I, I don't know. think. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think the states have to agree to give up that land for the district, right? There's a big difference in in the federal government owning a federal building or whatever, or you know, farmland or you know, the Bureau of Land Management owns a whole lot of land out there, but I don't think that DC can just come in and say, okay, this is now the District of Columbia. I don't think that, I don't think it works that way because it's still within the state. You know what I mean? So you go out there in Nebraska and you say, hey man, we're going to take, we own this. We're going to go ahead and take this away from Nebraska and we're going to make this, make this the new district. Well, then would you talk about, I don't know, man. I'd have to read it. Well, are, are these federal lands inhabited by people that vote? Well, and that's going to be the big thing, right? Because now yeah. you're just going to, you're, now, now they're going to lose representation just because the federal government decides they're going to come in and take this land. I, see, I don't think right. it works that way. I think the state has to agree to it. I think they have to secede that land to them. Um, and then Congress has to approve it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. So good luck because you're going to get Congress fighting over it too. Yeah. Whichever party is not going to benefit from from what they're trying to do is going to fight it all the way. And the people will rebel for certain. Huh. First, personally, I think all ten miles should be up in like freaking middle of nowhere somewhere. Get all these politicians away from up in Alaska, up in the mountains yes. of Alaska where nobody lives anyway. Boom. You want to be Congress? Boom. Get a nice winter. And coat. where the sun doesn't shine six months out of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's going to want to be there for 40 years. They'd be in and out. All right. You, Democracy oh, dies you, the Indian reservation land. What's that? <laughs> How do you think you'll go over if they try to use Indian reservation land? <laughs> well, we've are, I guess we've already tried that once, right? uh let's see where we at all right well i mean yeah good god man see this is what i like you guys get me thinking instead of me just reading it now i'll tell you what's going to happen is when i leave here now i'm going to be reading article one section eight again which is the whole hope for this whole thing this whole thing we do this is what my hope is this is my hope my hope is that now you guys are all like god brings up good points and now you guys are reading the constitution instead of just sitting here listening to me these are good talks and and you guys are making me go back to article one section eight which is what it's all about it's not it's not about memorizing the entire constitution it's about being able to go back and find find the information you're looking for and i think that's exactly what we did tonight this is this is what my hope is for this whole course or this whole thing we're doing is that right now when we talk about something you go you know what Mm, article one section eight i think that's where it is and you go back and you find it and this is absolutely fantastic so kudos to you guys i mean not kathy so much she's the one that got us off the rails <laughs> and not Daniela. she's the one who got me looking for stuff that i wasn't prepared to look up just keeping you honest jim keeping you <laughs> no, honest. No, no. it's all good it's all good <laughs> it's gonna be great for next week uh, all right. Well, I guess that's that. That's what the 22nd, 23rd says. 
we got questions and you know where to go. So hopefully now next week when we start up and I go, does anybody have anything on the 22nd, 23rd? I'm going to have a couple of you that are going to be like, hell yeah, I do. All right. I looked this up and here's what I think. So, um, you know, that's why I'm, I'm always asking you guys if you have anything, because I'm hoping you guys went back and looked up some stuff or, you know, we looked up this case law, you know, the Brown v. Uh, Board of Education, things like that, that we didn't know. So, you know, I, you guys got me tonight, man. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know a lot of what you guys were asking. You guys got me all stressed out here, but uh, that was a good talk tonight. I liked it. I would take this every single Tuesday. This actually lights my fire again, instead of me just reading to you guys. So anybody got anything? Anything else? Right at nine o'clock. All right. Well, if nobody's got anything, then uh, we have now read the 22nd. We've read the 23rd. I think next week we'll do the 24th. Maybe, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Maybe the 25th again, or maybe we'll just touch on the 25th, depending on how this thing goes that we talked about tonight. Um, so I'll say 24, 25, 26 for next week. Um, and then we'll just have the 27th left. You know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will just do 24, 25. We'll, we'll hit 25 again and talk about it as, as it could pertain to what's going on with, uh, with what we're talking about tonight now um, with order of succession. Because when we hit 25th before we really hit removing the president's hours, we didn't hit the order of succession, uh, succession so much. So now are we meeting next Tuesday before Thanksgiving? Uh, we oh, no, we weren't. We were not going to. You're right. We're going to skip next Tuesday. Uh, okay. Not only for Thanksgiving, but uh, Jonah Scholes is going to be going to the North Ridgeville Republican Club uh, to talk. If And you don't have to be a member to go to that. So anybody who's around that wants to hear Jonah talk, um, it will be Tuesday at 7 p.m., I believe, um, at the North Ridgeville VFW. Jonah will be I, there to talk. I might just be there. Are you going to be home? Yep. Get Are you really? Saturday. Yeah, I'll get in Saturday. That's next Tuesday, Jim? Dude, my dude. Yeah, yeah next Tuesday. Okay. Brad. All right. All right. Let me find my good bottles. <laughs> me and Brad. Me and Brad heading out. We'll Look out, Uber. Northeast Ohio. We'll get an Uber, man. This is going to be great. <laughs> Should right, I, so, my should house. I steal a bus? What's that? Should I steal a bus? <laughs> no. Oh, Carrie, that's right. Oh, no. Field trip. You guys can park in my house. I'm still on my no drinking kick, though, so that was kind of pointless. Oh, <laughs> come on. Hey, I can't drink. I'll drive. I'll just tell Tammy we need one for a field trip. Yeah, a field trip. All right. All right. Well, we can, uh, I'll see you guys over in the post. I'll be there for a little bit. I don't know. I got to work tomorrow, so I'm not going to be there too long tonight. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, just an FYI for the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, are you guys going to the volleyball awards? Yeah. What time's that start? I don't remember if it's a six or six 30. See, I wanted to say six. And so I should be home by then. As long as I have everything done and ready to go. You would hope. Uh, yeah, I would hope. I would hope. I, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot for yes for the 30th. Um, I may be texting out a, uh, sorry, I'm not going to make it at seven 30 while I'm sitting in the cafetorium. <laughs> so yep, we'll be there. All right. Uh, I will see you guys over in the post and, uh, we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about there. Thank you. All right.